Hello there, do you see this beautiful island? I made this in 15 minutes with World Painter and you can too if you watch this video. Downloads to everything I use is in the description. Let's fire up World Painter and get started. This is the Ultimate World Painter's Beginner Guide. If you lose me, feel free to pause or rewind the video. So immediately you're going to run to a problem on the right side where these brushes are the only option you have at creating train. Do not use these brushes. Get custom brushes instead. They are much better. Download the World Painter brush folder I left in the description. Once you've done that, click Tools and then Open Custom Brush Folder. You're going to take the pack you've downloaded, drop the folder in here and unzip it. Now close out and restart World Painter. You should see extra brush tabs showing up on the right. This means you now can use custom brushes. Now we can start making the world. Click File, New World, and I'm going to name it Epic 15 Minute Island. We're going to make it 1200 by 1200 about. I'll make it Flatland and click OK. And then I'll set up a 3D view. I don't really need this, but it's helpful to newer people and you guys watching who don't really have a feel for it yet. And it's also nice to view your work. I'll just plop that there in the top right corner as we view our beautiful, masterful work of art. You're going to find the Raise tool on the left side and click it. Then you're going to select one of our new custom brushes. Two very useful hockey controls are Alt Scroll to rotate your brush and Control Shift Scroll to zoom in or out. We're going to now start by kind of clearing away the sides of the island. Uh, I'm going to make sure to move this tab up here and set the intensity to 100%. We're going to continue by clearing the area, surrounding it by water because we want a nice island shape. I'm going to adjust 3D view and we're just going to keep kind of working away at it and turning it into a nice island shape the way we want it to be. Just get it nice and perfect. You'll want the water level to be kind of low around 30 and kind of the land to be above, but we're going to kind of just remove it all just to make sure that we have the sea level correct before we start raising up mountains. So zoom in, we're going to start increasing the height in the middle. Uh, typically on islands, you want the middle to be the highest and kind of outskirts to be the lowest, but I am kind of feeling that I want some cliffs, so maybe I'll account for that, have some high areas on the edges as well. But in general, if you're making your first island, uh, I'd recommend just going with something simple. But, you know, if you want to follow this tutorial and make it exactly how I am, then, you know, just click away at it like how I'm doing. We're going to use Flatten Tool to spread out the island and make it even so that we have a nice height that we can work with and compare for the future. So now that we're done with our base island, we're going to sort of create a kind of height plan. So I'm going to raise up to 100% again the intensity and we're going to raise up a huge mountain here. And we're going to do this in a couple spots of different heights because I will kind of want to get a feel for like how high I want areas and later we're going to be using flatten on top of these raised areas to make plateaus and then we're going to curve mountains into each other and it's going to be all planned out and it's going to look awesome so here we go we're going to do flatting on top and as you can see it's flattening out and creating a cliff over here uh, we're going to sharpen the cliff and just try to make it look better you know um, kind of get the spike on the side And we'll continue just hammering away at this cliff, flattening it out, turning it into my dream island, as you would say, or just whatever image is in my head. Um, I can show an image, kind of how I was thinking it to look for when I was making this. So here, for editing purposes, I'll just drop this on screen. When you're flattening mountains, be sure to pay attention to this number right here, the height, and this small window down here. It's very easy to miss. I'm going at like 150, 70, and just general heights, so sea level would be around 65, maybe up to 60, and then also the small mountains I want around 70 or 80, and then the really tall ones I want around 100 to 150. So you're probably thinking the mountain is one height right now, and that's true, so we're going to start layering the cliffs area by using the flatten tool, and we're going to kind of click on the slopes. And that's going to layer it and turn it into a more interesting cliff to look at instead of just, you know, it's flatness. Uh, we're also going to increase the height on some of the mountain parts and also change the flat areas by adding some light mountains on top to kind of remove the flatness and give it some life. 
I'm gonna use another one of my special brushes to create a giant mountain over here. We're gonna raise the brush, we're gonna scroll back, making it real huge, and we're gonna just hold down click and summon a gigantic mountain. We're also going to kind of clip the mountain range together to make it more interesting. And right here, it's kind of getting ruined by the flat parts. So we're going to flatten that out, and then we're going to raise on top of it to kind of fix that area and make it really nice and spiky The matches. We'll continue by making a small mountain here and editing the outside range. Over here, I don't want this to be a cliff. I want it to be a kind of steeper area. So I'm going to do flatten and go to 30% and start flattening out the creases or what's the word I'm thinking of? Slopes. Yes. We're going to start flattening out parts of the slopes to kind of make it mix in. So it's not just one giant wall that the player is looking at, but in fact something that is much nicer to look at and they can possibly climb up. There's a lot of options you can do here. It's all just how you want it to look. It's just all your hand. You do have to experiment with this if you want good results. So keep that in mind. It's all in the hand. And practice makes perfect. We're going to go up here and start layering this area even more. We're going to switch to 100% again with this special cliff brush I have. And this is really going to cliffify it, if that's a word. I made it up right now. And we're going to start cliffifying the whole area make it much more interesting to kind of jump around and this is really where it gets nice you can see on the right side things are getting interesting and we're just kind of kind of do this all over the top of the mountain so that it really stands out because i like it and i like how this looks and it's my map and i can do what i want it's as bob ross says there are no mistakes if you misclick or something it might be a good idea to keep it because it adds kind of a unique quirk to your terrain believe it or not it's just like painting a picture. Now going to move to the bottom areas and give some focus. Again, I'm going to be using the flatten tool on this, which is very effective at layering things once more even further. And the amount you want to go is up to you, the shape you want. Again, as I said, there are no mistakes unless you do like something extremely steep or something or extremely spiky. Maybe you want to undo those. I would consider those mistakes, but that's up to you. You should experiment. I highly encourage experimenting. And I'm just going to layer this uh, outside cliff over here. Maybe look around. Just kind of thinking about where I should add more layered stuff. Because I really do like layers. And I'm actually going to make a little mountain here. Or, nah, I don't think that looks good. We're going to go this way. Gonna shift it. A little mountain here. And how does that look? complete the mountain range. I'm also going to make a little island here, just for example, like making a smaller island for you guys. Going to use the flatten tool again. And move it around. And I do want a cliff on this island, so I think I'm going to kind of make the top part smaller. And then I'm going to use smoothen with another one of our special brushes, and we're going to kind of smooth out the top and really make it cliff-like. Use this tool here layer it make it interesting layers are amazing you should use layers you don't have to though it's just my preference it's my style you know for the sake of the tutorial i'll be creating a little river here too that kind of blends with the ocean do a little bit here and kind of make it close to the mountain and we're going to Maybe make a lake too, just for the sake of tutorial. I don't think it's really necessary here. I don't think this island... I think this island is great without really a river or a lake, but I'm just going to do it to show you guys how easy it is to make it. There are other ways to make rivers that I will explain in another video if you want them to go up cliffs and stuff. So, like this video if you want a part two. Let's go with 100 likes, and I'll teach you guys how to create caves, rivers that go up mountains and slopes, and also floating islands like some of my other videos. I'll probably call that video the Intermediate World Painter Tutorial, as some things in there are very complicated. Uh, I don't like that little spike at the bottom left of the map. I'm kind of thinking I want that change to be more layered again. So I'm going to go over there. I'm going to just cliff it up, layer it up. Cliffify. My favorite word of the video. Now bam, bam. Shbam, shbam, bam. Alright, yeah. I'm liking this. This is perfect. Just a little bit more here. And there we go. Good enough. 
I like how this whole island looks and now I'm ready to texture it. So I'm gonna go to edit global operations. So global operations is very good for texturing your terrain once you're finished with it. It can also add trees and stuff. I'm gonna press R and look for rock. We're gonna do above 45 degrees and set it to 40. And then we're gonna keep the window open and we're gonna click go. And as you can see, our entire terrain is now textured. But I wanna go a step further. I want it to look colorful and better. So I'm gonna be looking for scion terracotta. We're gonna raise it to about eh, 55, I'd say. Let's go. And now you can see that scion terracotta has colored it. But I want it to be colored even more. So we're gonna set it to 70 or above. And we're gonna be looking for a gray stained terracotta. We'll do that. And there you go. Now we have colorful, much more colorful than before. But we can go a step further. So I'm gonna do blackstone. And where is it? Blackstone, there it is. We're gonna do at or above 75 degrees. And we're gonna do that. Good kill. And now we have a fully textured terrain that looks pretty nice. And it's as simple as that, guys. Now, the next step we're gonna do is probably be adding trees. So for trees, I'm going to be importing a pre-made world painter layer for a taiga forest with rocks. You can find the download to this taiga layer in the description as well. You can place this taiga layer anywhere on your computer. You just gotta navigate to it after you click the plus and layers. I'm just gonna open this and kind of show you the layout of it, what it looks like. Then we're gonna go to pencil and we're gonna select a kind of lighter brush. And before I start adding trees, I kind of realized that we have no beaches. So we're going to go to global operations and select sand. And then we're also going to do height below uh, 30 degrees or so. And we're going to do only on terrain grass. We're going to keep the window open and we're going to click go. And this should kind of set out beach on our entire area. We're also going to do add or below 65. And that's looking pretty good, I think. Now we're gonna continue by putting the taiga layer. We're gonna select a light circle and we're just gonna start posting on only grass. And, you know, we'll do it kind of lightly around here. Don't wanna make it too heavy. Uh, definitely don't be too heavy handed. And remember to keep your percentage thickness around 50% so that you can be sure that it won't be like super dense forest that will just make it so players can't walk through it. Let's go around here, placing it on tops of mountains. I don't want any by the beach. And you notice how I have selected only on grass to make sure that it doesn't go on the beach and doesn't go in the ocean or anything. So you gotta be very careful of that because you don't want trees spawning underwater. You also don't want them spawning like on the sand. That'd be kind of weird. So we just kind of stick to the inland and maybe the cliff sides and stuff like that. And, you know, we're going to use another layer here, actually. I'm kind of feeling palm trees, so I'm going to select this palm tree layer, and we're probably going to put that on the sand and all that. And this is what the palm tree layer looks like. There's some pumpkins on it. I really like this, but there's a couple different ones you can use. There's a lot of options. And, obviously, uh, download link also in the description for my palm trees. And we're going to just kind of go around the beach and you notice how I selected only on land because now I want to do it on the sand and on the grass. I'm also doing below 30 degrees to kind of avoid like steep hills. And let's see. What do I want to do here now? Uh, I'm liking how this map looks. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll do some flowers. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, not objects. We do a plant slayer. And to add a bunch of flowers, you get this. Uh, the plant slayer, you're just going to kind of select each of what you want. And we're going to do a bunch of flowers. I want it to be nice and colorful. Thinking some grass, too. Fern, large fern. Okay. We're going to do some plants as well. Maybe. I'm just kind of thinking. I'm just trying to color it. I'm trying to make it sure it looks good in my. Head. It does take some trial and error, so I'm just kind of doing this by memory. We're going to select a very light circle, and we're going to do the spray brush. And we're going to spray plants on, because this is not a layer. Each little dot that you see when I click is... It represents a plant that will spawn, basically. So, again, you don't want to be at 100%. You want to keep it low. Uh, maybe just one or two clicks here or there. 
and that should be good. We're going to save the file, and we're going to export it. Now, this is the exporting window. We're going to set it to creative. We're going to set our version to 1.19 or later. You can select any version, though. This will still work as so long as your mountains aren't super high. We're going to do endless water because it's an island. Uh, we're also going to go to resources and caves. We're going to check the caves because we want some caves spawning in our world. However, you do want to uncheck or... Yeah, you want to check the dripstone lush cave and uncheck the caves break the surface. And you're going to click export. And the map, well, you'll just let the program do its thing, and then you're going to check it out in-game. It'll automatically generate in your saves folder in Minecraft, so let's go check it out. So here's the result I got. Your guys will probably be a little bit different, but I'd say I'm pretty happy with this. We can see the palm trees generated nicely, and also the mountains and the trees. They just kind of mix and match together. We also got the island over here with a nice little cliff. You can see some uh, more palm trees kind of surrounding the edge. And overall, I think this is a very nice view, so I don't think I really want to make any edits. However, you can still improve this map and take it to a professional level with more detailed texturing, better trees, and multiple biomes. If you want to take your world painting to the next level, I'm offering the Ultimate World Painter Starter Pack on my Patreon, which comes with a thousand schematics with assets, trees, rocks, spikes, volcanoes, sea plants, you name it, it probably has it all of which you can use in your own creations. Inside of this pack is what I have been using to make all these terrain videos on my channel. Even if it's not for World Painter, you can still use these in your own builds. The value you get from this is insane. Thank you for watching. If this video gets 100 likes, I'll cover how to make custom caves, floating islands, and other crazy stuff like rainbow ravines in an intermediate tutorial. Happy World Painting, everyone. Bye-bye.